The World Health Organization Global Oral Health Status Report 2022 estimated that oral diseases affect close to 3.5 billion people worldwide, with three out of four people affected living in middle-income countries. Globally, an estimated 2 billion people suffer from dental caries of permanent teeth and 514 million children suffer from dental caries of primary teeth. Prevalence of the main oral diseases continues to increase globally with growing urbanization and changing in living conditions. This is why on this episode of the program, Healthy Living on Trust TV, we will take a look at dental care with a focus on the benefits of maintaining good oral hygiene. We'll go over now to Dr. Anya Moakibo, who is a dentist, for more insights and perspectives on the subject. Welcome to the program, Dr. Akimbo. I know that uh, the conversation today is around oral health, oral hygiene, but before we get right into that, I'd like for you to, you know, as a background, uh, tell us about the structure of the teeth and its functionality. When it comes to health, oral health, or the structure of a, dent of a teeth, we are looking at three main factors. You know, when you smile, you see the gum, it starts with the lips before you see the gum, the, the teeth, the tongue, and the cheeks. There are so many factors to the oral cavity. Now, when it comes to the teeth, we are looking at three main components. The outer layer, which is the enamel. The middle layer, which is dentine. And the center of the tooth, which is the pulp. Now, at the outer layer has less nerves, less, um, it, it generally doesn't have nerve. So when you have a fracture of that outer layer, you may not feel pain, okay? But once it gets to the middle layer, which is the dentine, you start to have sensitivity because we have what we call some dentinal tubules that send signals to the core, the center, which is the pulp. Okay, and once it gets, once it sends signals to that pulp, that's where you feel pain. That's why, as we go into the conversation, you will find out that when you start having tooth decay, you don't feel pain at the initial stage. Mm -hmm. So if you don't show up at the dental clinic for checkup and cleaning, you see that by the time you start feeling pain, it has already gone too deep. All right. Okay, so we have those are the three main structure of the teeth. Then we also have the part where you don't see, which is within the gum, the bone. We have the roots of the tooth. We have the crown. First is the crown of the tooth. Then we have the root of the tooth. Then if you divide its midsection, you see the enamel, the middle part, and the core. Now, around the root, we also have supporting tissue that holds the roots in place within the bone okay we call them periodontal tissues yes so all of these help keep the tooth in the mouth mm. so these are structures this is the structure of a tooth mm. what then would you say is the function of, of this the structure mm. well like i said the periodontal ligaments hold the the tooth within the bone and supports the tooth when you are grinding okay you have the crown which is where we see when you smile or your chewing surface it helps with chewing okay when you're chewing you're grinding you're using the crown part of your teeth to chew the root part is within the bone which gives support for the pressure you use in grinding so these are the forms so what would you say are the causes of this or what are the major uh, oral diseases and also the causes of these most prevalent oral diseases within um, working age children to adult would be dental caries dental caries is um, simply put tooth decay this is when the hard part of the teeth or the tooth starts to is demineralized meaning it becomes soft it's damaged and then there there are some other activity that goes on within the tooth to extend the decay even further so Dental caries can be seen in children, in adults, and even older people in some cases, depending on their diets. Okay, we also have other dental conditions like gingivitis. Now we are 
expected to come see the dentist every six months for scaling and polishing because of gingivitis. Gingivitis simply means inflammation of the gum. This is the red part where you see when you smile, the red part of your teeth. That's inflammation of the gum. It, it may not look obvious at um, the beginning or after a long period of time. You won't see people going about with red swollen gum because these are the features of inflammation. But it gets chronic that any small problem, probing you see bleeding. When you brush, when you notice that you, when you brush you see bleeding or you have brushed, it doesn't take up to 12 hours, your breath is not smelling so fresh, then you definitely need to see the dentist. So that is gingivitis. Now we have chronic and acute, which is what I try to explain. The acute one is the one that, you, that appears reddish. <laughs> the one that doesn't appear reddish, just pales, just there, is the chronic gingivitis. Also, we have um, periodontal diseases. Periodontal diseases is when the supporting tissue I explained earlier that supports, that holds the roots within the, the tooth and the gum becomes damaged through our habits. Now, we have people who when they eat, you see them, they start using toothpick. Okay, they are pushing in indeliberately pushing in more food debris within the gum okay and this would lead to introduction of bacteria within that gum food substance and decay and now your body tries to fight off that decay and inadvertently damage tissue around there and then you notice that you are having pockets that means a space where food packs in when you eat that's pockets now you still go ahead and keep trying to use a toothpick to break it and then it just it's just a spiral and then it keeps getting worse and painful and before you know you have to miss a day at work because of that mm -hmm. that's this is this is um periodontal disease we also have um ulcers mouth ulcers this could be due to stress okay or low blood counts and all uh -huh. so you might need to watch your diet some people react to certain fruits some people they can't eat things that are citrusy they get blisters and sores hepatic gingival stomatitis okay we when you should go to playgrounds you see that they share sweets share spoons you know it coming it's transmissible in in children playgrounds okay now you have blisters you have drooling you have they are irritable they don't want to eat all of that affects the entire health of that child so coming to the dentist regularly or when you notice any discomfort would help a great deal in curtailing many of these diseases and prevent them from getting even worse yeah. for the dental caries um, I, I like to know what exactly is the cause of that Four factors that lead to dental caries, which is the prevalent dental disease among adults and children. So now we have tooth surface. We have that. Your teeth. Bacteria. We all have bacteria in our mouth from passing through the birth canal, picking things from the floor. Over the years, we accumulate um, bacteria in our mouth. But these are not harmful to us but it depends on the condition. When the immune system is down, they can become very, um, they can proliferate, okay? Meaning increase or dominate, and then they become unpleasant, we have to treat. But otherwise, they live there, they are okay. Now we need food substance. Now the kind of food you eat plays a very important role with your with the prevalence of dental caries, with your incidence of having dental caries. Okay? Say for example you like sticky sweets, chocolates, biscuits, processed food or processed sugar. These have higher chances of sticking on your teeth. Now when this sticky food rest on your teeth and you don't brush okay bacteria living in your mouth feeds on this food and produce what what produces an acid that breaks down this this hard substance which is your enamel he breaks it down and becomes soft and then more bacteria go in and demineralize the, the tooth now all of this doesn't happen in one day it takes time so that is where time comes in. Now, say for example, you don't brush, you eat, you don't brush at night. 
I usually advise my patients, you can not brush in the morning. Don't worry, somebody will tell you in the day. But if you don't brush at night, nobody tells you, but you have a high chance of getting caries. Okay, so it's, a, it's as important as brushing in the morning, brushing at night. So if you don't brush, these bacteria feed on the food on your tooth surface, produces an acid, and within the period 12 hours from when you last brushed, to the next time you are going to brush, that's 24 hours because this, if you read your toothpaste, they say it has protection for 12 hours. So you have 12 hours for these bacteria to have fun and produce acid that breaks down your teeth and demineralizes it. So these are the main four factors. Now, um, I understand that there are products out there that people use to help cater to their dental health. Well, as an expert, I want to hear from you how do you think what's the best measure to go in taking care of our teeth okay. um taking care of your teeth is priority it's very important because the mouth is the gateway to the body whatever you put in your body goes through your mouth it's only the sick people that have to take needles and injections but once you're healthy it goes through your mouth so you need to take care of your mouth now when it comes to taking care of your mouth, we have different options. But the best and the recommended one is brushing. Now, when we come to brushing, like we explained earlier, when food sticks to your teeth, bacteria feeds on it, produces acid and damages that teeth, right? Brushing removes food debris lodged on your teeth. So bacteria doesn't have what to eat to break down your teeth that's very important because it breaks the circle okay so brushing is very important now it's not just brushing you can't just take a uh, abrasive salt and brush your teeth or baking soda which of course works but there is a vital importance in it something very important that we need in brushing our teeth or keeping a healthy teeth it's called fluoride now this is very tricky Fluoride um, can be poisonous, yes. We have had cases in northern Nigeria where they had excess fluoride in their water supply and we noticed people had fluorosis, vomiting and all, you know. In fact, some of our patients, when you see their smile, you know that they are from this part of the country because it's prevalent there. Something happened to their water at some point in time. Fluoride can be can be very dangerous, but the little minimal quantity we have in our toothpaste serves us okay. And you don't need that uh, advert size when you are brushing. You know the kind that you see on TV when they want you. You don't need that much. Okay, just enough to brush. Marketing of food and beverages high in sugar, as well as tobacco and alcohol, according to reports, has led to a growing consumption of products that contribute to oral health conditions and other NCDs. We'll go on a quick break now, and when we do return, we'll pick up the conversation around good oral hygiene. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. If you're just joining in, this is the program Healthy Living on Trust TV, where we have been exploring perspectives on how and why it is necessary to take proper care of the teeth and maintain a good oral hygiene. And I still have with me Dr. Anya Moakinbo or Kungbo, who has been uh, doing justice to this subject. I know before we went on the break, you were talking about um, fluoride in. Um, toothpaste and uh, it's um the dangers it potents especially if we have it in excess uh, amount now I, I like to know you talked about brushing i know that for some people uh they do not subscribe to using the toothbrush though they rather use the chewing sticks i'm talking about some people in some parts of the country that that subscribe to that what do you think about what's the difference between using the toothbrush and the and uh, chewing stick using chewing stick is fine as much as you if you prefer that is fine now the the challenge with that would be the technique you are using 
We don't mind you using chewing stick because our forefathers were using chewing sticks, served them right, okay? They, 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 they had the use for it, which led to development and, you know, what we have now. But that doesn't mean that we want to scratch it out. There are people who prefer it and we encourage them to. Also, we would advise that in as much as you use your chewing stick, we don't mind that you use a little bit of fluoride. After you have chewed it, you have brushed, you use a little bit of fluoride containing toothpaste, as minimal as we have explained, and do the brushing with it because of the importance of fluoride in your toothpaste. It strengthens your teeth. Minimal quantity, it strengthens your teeth. And you spit out. So the, when I say technique, now if you notice people that use um, chewing stick, they do this. Okay, now in doing that, one you might had you might use heavy pressure, a lot of pressure. That's one, and in your in that movement you are making, it can damage the gums, strip the gum off the neck of the tooth, exposing the root that is not supposed to be exposed in the first place, and lead to sensitivity and damage in the long run. So how you use it is very important as much as why you are using it how you use it when you are brushing you have chewed your chewing stick is now fluffy you don't need to do a vertical motion up and down you need a rotary motion when you do a rotary motion it it can cleanse your teeth without damaging your gums so that's fine just the technique and then also introduction of two fluoride containing toothpaste mm. what about the technique of using the toothbrush it also applies mm -hmm. you know we're talking we have, we have we are just getting to techniques or brushing techniques we have what we call the wrist roll method now i'm sure you have heard or seen on all the skits where people are brushing and their gate man can hear them brushing it's making so much noise you don't need that much force when you are brushing your teeth you don't. The same um, pressure you use in cleaning your precious jewel, that's how much pressure you use for brushing your teeth. Okay? Not so much force. That's one. And when you brush, you use the wrist, ro wrist roll method. If you can see the motion I'm making, I could show you with this. Say you want to brush. This is a mannequin. Now, when you're brushing, we advise that you keep your mouth slightly open, okay? Not closed, so you can see everything you are brushing. If you close and you do this, can you see you are not effective? So you open slightly and you do the wrist roll, the wrist roll technique. I Sometimes I sing with it for children. I roll my wrist, I sweep it out, I roll my wrist. So you sweep out food debris and while you are massaging your gum sweep it out so it, it can even get in between crevices as opposed to doing this or doing this when you do this you strip this is the gum you strip the gum off the neck of the tooth exposing the root part which is not designed to be in you know open it's not designed to be open and then you have sensitivity that leads to sensitivity so you don't need that you need the wrist roll technique and then you do this i roll my wrist i sweep it out can you see that you do that for the upper parts okay you do that and then for the lower as well you sweep upwards yes not down because the aim is not to damage the gum the gums are this way if you strip them they get damaged so you sweep upwards okay you roll your wrist you sweep it out you see i've gone to the lingual side which is the inner parts okay you sweep out you sweep out and then the occlusal surface you brush as you should okay you brush as you should what kind of toothbrush do you need a medium texture brush we have different types you see the hard the soft and the medium you do not need a hard brush i keep saying that again and again you do not need a hard brush the only time we get to use a hard brush for 
our, our patients is twice a year when we do polishing and we do not do the up and down technique. We do a rotary motion. We use a rotary motor to use a hard brush to smoothen the surface of your teeth after scaling and polishing. We call it after scaling. It's called polishing. Okay, that's when we use hard brush. So everybody, even when you, if you are a smoker, you don't need that brush called the smoker's brush. No, you don't. And those, there are people who say they feel uncomfortable when they don't use hard brush. If you are able to brush your teeth twice daily with a fluoride containing toothpaste and a medium texture brush, and you come to the clinic twice every year for scaling and polishing, you find out that you don't, you don't even have need for mouthwash. Okay, you don't have need for mouthwash because most of the mouthwashes they, they sell out there, you really don't need it. This is take it. This is a dentist's advice. We there is only one ingredient. There, there is one main ingredient that we require when it comes to gum health and mouthwash uses is chlorhexidine. So if you are getting any to mouthwash, it has to have chlorhexidine, and you don't use it for a long period of time, just for about a week because it can cause stains on your teeth. So we prescribe it after a a, a treatment has been done. And you use it for about a week and you discontinue okay so after brushing around your teeth make sure you brush the inner surface and the grinding surface remember to brush your tongue some people brush their teeth and they forget about their tongue now we have what we call the tongue scraper i could show you one i, I, I didn't keep one here a tongue scraper you use to clean the surface of your tongue because that could have bacterial load. We didn't mention halitosis when we we're talking about oral diseases, which is mouth odor. People come in here every time saying they are concerned about their breath. It could be as a result of a pathology within the mouth, a hole, a, a, a hole in the tooth, hole within the gum, periodontal disease, or even coating on the tongue bacterial load of debris and coating on the tongue can lead to halitosis so when you use a tongue scraper it reduces that um, as well and gives you a fresh breath all in all you don't need a hard brush mm -hmm. flossing is very important during brushing of teeth after brushing your teeth you have successfully cleaned at least 64 percent of your teeth surface now the part in between your teeth is about 34 percent and altered six percent and you haven't cleaned that yet that's why um flossing comes in flossing is as important as brushing where you use a thread like material to clean the mesial surface proximal surfaces of your teeth okay so now when food this plaque moves into those proximal surfaces which is the gap on the sides of your teeth when the plaque moves in there your brush can't get there right now over time it absorbs calcium from the saliva and becomes hard then it turns to what we call calculus heavy stone it looks like stone it's there in between it can it, there are different sizes it depends on how poor the oral hygiene is okay so it builds up by absorbing calcium from your saliva and just sticks on your teeth now, while it's sticking on your teeth and building itself up, it's damaging your, the gum of that teeth, making it, it's getting it inflamed. In fact, in fact, it even leads to halitosis. Okay, so this is why you actually come to the dentist to remove those plaque, those calculus and plaque, to remove them as they, they have stuck to your teeth. Your regular brush cannot take them out. So we use our ultrasonic scaler to try and bring them out of your your teeth in those crevices your brushes don't get to or you skipped or you missed in six months you come we clean them and then we polish them we smoothen the surface okay so what would you say i know we've talked about the oral diseases uh what would you say are the health system challenges to help uh for oral health now to help curb some of this um this diseases that we've talked about what are the health system challenges well, I, my, from my observation, I noticed that um, dental is not factored in in the primary health care system. 
that and that is the grassroots first contact to the people within the inner cities or the foraging villages the primary health center and dental has not been factored which is uh, not very good which is something the government should look into now at that stage if a child or an adult walks into a, a health care system and complains of dental because dental procedures are a bit on the high side maybe not a bit it's on the high side because most of what we do we don't produce them here in nigeria we have to import them and before using them making our price go high and you know affected by the dollar exchange rate here and there aside that negligence on awareness in the inner cities people are not even in town people are not aware that some of their health insurance covers this procedure even if it's just consultation and the regular scaling and polishing they're not aware and people who are aware don't have time to come people that need it don't have health insurance these are some of the challenges people that needed the children in the inner cities that need it they don't have health insurance to cover for it so in in bid to curb that some of us usually do health riches health outreaches into the inner cities to try and educate people one because if you don't know you'll have a challenge you will not seek help okay so we go in and educate them and try as much as possible to provide for them as small as it is a sachet of toothpaste so that they can add to their chewing stick while they brush okay now seeking dental health um dental checkup and treatment as soon as you notice anything or let's just place it on six months regular because it, it takes more than six months for you to start having dental ache that leads to pain if you don't show up in six months that means there's something there's probably something going on in your mouth you cannot see but by the time you're having pain it has gone too far because we said it has it goes through the three layers the enamel no sensitivity no pain no discomfort right but when it gets to the dentin you start having sensitivity you start having discomfort but when it gets to the pulp you you may not be able to sleep at night you will take pain reliever it's not working you have they will say go and buy one touch and go you know that doesn't work it just damages tooth even further you know all of these are the challenges we face in the health both from the government aspects the health care system and reaching in bridging the gap between the dental mm. health practitioner and the people that need it mm. as a final word just in summary what would you say what would you recommend as the best uh, measure towards maintaining good oral hygiene just in one sentence brush twice day uh, visit your dentist every six months use a fluoride containing toothpaste and a medium texture brush if you have all of these things in check you shouldn't have any problem with your dental maintaining a good oral hygiene is just as important as any other personal hygiene in an event you notice any oral disease it's important you visit a dental clinic or see a dentist so you can prevent before even uh, having these diseases and that wraps up the episode of the program today uh, for comments contributions and suggestions on this episode do well to follow like and subscribe all of our social media platforms join us again on another episode of the program healthy living on trust tv i'm aisha saliho thanks for your time <music>